Everyone's present. We have a quorum. Um, I'm going to move uh, the sanitation director nomination to the first item of business tonight. Uh, I want to thank all of our applicants, uh, Danny Russell, Ray Bostick, David Dossett, Bill Rutherford, Frank Tierney, uh, Mike works for us now. Um, where'd you go? I'm missing one. Where'd Dwayne go? Dwayne, Gibson, everybody. Uh, we've had an outstanding field of applicants, and I think every one of these people out here care so much about this community and making it better, and uh, had to balance quite a few things. Um, I have a uh, primary and an alternate tonight in mind, and so I'd like to announce the, uh, the individual nominee and uh, give them a chance to present themselves for a couple minutes and then move to vote. And we'll see where we're at after that. Um, Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Is all of them in Campbell County? Yeah. Yes. Yes, everybody's from Campbell County. Yes. I'll make a suggestion. It's up to you if you have objections or not. Can you have each candidate uh, introduce yourself as well as um, giving some information with their background and everything? Uh, about a minute and a half, two minute speech. Okay. You want to offer the floor to each each candidate? I would like to. Okay. I mean, I can. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I think he's maybe, we talked about that before, maybe a little bit about their credentials and stuff like that, just okay. in the short term. Thanks. That'd be fine. Uh, Danny, you're closest to the mic. Would you like to step forward? Joe, can you make sure that's on, please? Joe, I didn't come to make a speech now. I could let Joe do this because he'd known me since I was 23 year old. So, uh, but anyway, I've been a Campbell County resident all my life since 1953, so you can figure it out. So, uh, but anyway, I've built here, done different, different positions, different things, and gone to church here, know a lot of these people here, and the sad part of it is a lot of them I did know, they're gone. You know, they were good. But anyway, I, like I say, I've been building for years, and I've tried different, different positions, different things in a lot of different places. And I've always figured my way through. And I, you know, I do run equipment some, and uh, like I say, run my own business for 40, just a little over 40 years. And it's always been successful. And I've kind of slowed down a little bit, just a little piddle thing. And uh, and I said something will come up that I might be interested in. So this come up. So and I've looked at it before and applied before, and that passed by. But I just see things that could be done, could be done. A lot of it is repairs. Things could be done, and uh, and a little bit better coordination in a lot of things. And your one of the big problems I notice is in your wood. So it's going to have to be dealt with big time. And you can redo what you've got. And get, but you're gonna, you've got a lot of things to deal with in that, and the other things seem like they can be handled better, and do a, a checklist of everything that has to be done, equipment, what it is, what's bought, and the whole nine yards. Everything's got to be done to proceed on with your project, and it's all going to come to a head real fast, no matter who's there. So uh, you notice, know, like you know, simple as change as checking oil to what stuff, what things cost, and give an account for it. And I've always been able to give an account for it. I believe I worked for Joe one time, and he did an audit on his. And I said, Joe, what'd you find? He said, I believe a saw blade and a hammer, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anyway, Joe's known me for years and years, so as well. So. And uh, I got his job by being able to do something that nobody else could figure out. So I figured out how to do it, how to get a, a heat and air system in his house. He said, if you can figure that out, you can do the job. So it was a complicated thing. Joe's kind of, he's back there, he's been back there a long time. So I've been doing this since I was 23 year old and I'm still able to keep going. So, and I believe I could have helped the county. I would do my dead level best to, and also to train other people in certain places. Maybe they don't know how to do it as well. So that's about it. Thank you. Ray? Thank 
I'm Ray Bostick. I've been a lifelong resident of Campbell County. Uh, I know most of, most all of you. Um, <clears throat> I work for TWRA now as in the trucking and uh, equipment operator. Uh, I worked for sanitation years ago when it first started in the recycling. Uh, done a lot of the grade work and in, in, in the building there. And, uh, and like Danny said, there's a, a lot of stuff that needs to be changed and done. Maintenance records, clean up. Um, you know, just put a little facelift on on your recycle your sites, uh, convenience centers, um, and then keep maintenance records of your trucks and. And all that, I, you know, that's not a, that's not a big deal. It's just going to take time to do it all. Uh, the wood, he said, you know, I've, I've got some ideas on how to get rid of a lot of that stuff and do, you know, some changes with that. Uh, then, in, I mean, that's that's pretty much, you know, that in a nutshell. What you know, the stuff that needs to be done and just clean up around the place and do, do general maintenance and train people on how to do stuff. Thank you. Thank you. David? Sounds like a beating a dead horse. Born and raised here, know about every one of them. Uh, got a degree in business up at ETSU years ago. Come back, farmed all my life. Uh, bought out Terry Claiborne. Ran trucks for 23 years, closed down about a year ago know a lot about the safety side of the trucks and running trucks. I've ran a lot of equipment and to beat a dead horse, yeah, there's a lot needs to be cleaned up, straightened up, maintenance records. I mean, just stuff that you see right off the bat that some of you have told me about also. Uh, was asked last year by two of you about what I've seen across the road from me. And they're, if you look, if you sit on the outside and look at any other place, everybody's always going to see a problem. But that doesn't mean the person there is going to fix it. I mean, everybody can voice their opinion and say this needs fixed, that needs fixed. But it's getting it fixed that will count. And there's a lot of it there that needs fixed. That's not pointing the finger to say anybody else is bad or worse or anything else. But that's just stuff that needs to be done and hasn't been done. Thank you. Bill? I'm Bill Rutherford, Jr., actually. Uh, again, like the rest of these fellas, um, a lifelong Campbell Countyan, except for the time frame I was in the Marine Corps, uh, I was at Twin Nine Palms. Uh, saying that, I know trash. Uh, worked for waste management uh, about nine years, a little under nine years, actually. Uh, worked for Waste Connections. Made my way from the back of a garbage truck, uh, picking up trash, up to a supervisor at Waste Management. Uh, furthered my career with Waste Connections as a route manager. Uh, I was there six months in Knoxville and went and took a site over in Lilly, Kentucky as operations manager. Uh, and that's what I've done for the last four years. Uh, recently, I'm, I've been employed. They asked me to take a site over in Peachland, South Carolina. Uh, at the time, I was currently pastoring a little church. Unfortunately, his ways are a whole lot bigger than mine and I couldn't move. Uh, so I ended up leaving, uh, leaving on good terms of Waste Connections. Um, there's a saying that we say in the industry, uh, just because we haul trash don't mean we have to look like trash. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's all that it boils down to. Uh, $500 worth of paint goes a long ways. Um, on the flip side of it, they, they might be, be minor to fix, but it, it's needful for the county to, to be able to maintain these truck records because DOT requires you to keep them for 90 days. Uh, so at the end of the day, you have to be squared away uh, when it comes to your DQ driver qualification files, your truck files, it's got to be squared away. Uh, on the flip side of it, it's about managing the middle. Uh, the people that's there, uh, they just might be in the wrong spots. Uh, it's about managing those people. Uh, nobody's looking to jump ship or, or go in and rock the boat, but you got to weed out the low hanging fruit. That not necessarily means getting rid of people. Uh, that means managing and then spending the being good stewards of the county's money. I could go on and on for hours, uh, as, as Mayor Morton will tell you, about the things that I see. But at the end of the day, I think it's hiring the right person that's able uh, to be able to get in and, and be able to take care of the situation that's going on out there. 
Uh, it's it's more than just trash, and I know the county may not see that. There is a method behind it. Uh, perception is 90% of what people view. I mean, hey, look, if the neighbors are calling in and they think that things ain't going on out there, guess what? Your phones are going to be ringing. And at the end of the day, that's, that's what has to stop. Transparency, you have to be able to see everything going on out there, whether it's from the finance side. <clears throat> Here's the thing. It costs $104 an hour to run a roll-off truck. We we have to justify running a roll-off truck for 104 hours or for $104 an hour. At the end of the day, you have to be able to maintain that. I, I know that we've talked briefly, El, about you know what it costs as op, what percentage of operating company it is. It concerns me as a citizen that the data is there, but being able to obtain that data and present it. Uh, you, you have to be able to go through a P&L, uh, decipher exactly what it is, whether it's tires all the way down to gloves. I, too, use this facility out tow string, and I go and I throw my trash away, and I can go in at will, and no one's stopping me. I'm concerned with that. So when I'm taking trash as a county to Waste Connections in Scott County, and I have no way to sit and tell you exactly how much tonnage we're getting in. There's no accountability. There's no way that you can monitor it unless you put a scale house. I mean, there's, all, there's numerous ways that you have to be able to fix it, but it's being able to implement those and looking outside the box. That facility alone is wasting a fortune and just not having everything's in the right places. I'll tell you this, I'm sure all these fellows are good candidates. But at the end of the day, I too know how to drive a truck. I too know how to operate equipment. But it's about running the business side of the trash company. And at the end of the day, that's what you have to have. Thank you all. Frank Tierney. Good evening, everybody. Frank Tierney. Some of you know me. I've been, I am, unfortunately, I'm the odd man out. I'm not a native to Campbell County. I've only lived in the county about 21 years now. Uh, I retired from the Army, 22 years in the Army as an infantryman, and then 20 years up to high school. A couple of y'all know me and know the kind of work we do up there, and that's what I can bring to the job. I've been managing people for over 40 years, and I'm not gonna beat the dead horse. I've seen the same thing the other guys have talked about that have come up here. Appearance, managing the people, and managing the money. That's what, what it boils down to, and that's what I can do. Okay, thank you. All right, Mike. Howdy, everybody. Hope you all having a good evening tonight. Uh, my name is Mike King. I'm a native of Campbell County, just like everyone else here. Um, some I've worked at sanitation for going on 12 years. I know the ins and the outs, including the office, all can do all reports. Ken run the scale system and all. Uh, I can do every job. I have done every job. I am able to jump in a truck, any truck. I've got a license to run either any piece of equipment or truck that we have. Um, the main thing out there is I think we need to establish accountability. I'll give you a few of my st objectives, you know, stay within budget, safety education, training, cross training where guys can do all jobs. Uh, that way if one misses, we can have them to move over and do the other job that the guy missed if we've got time. Uh, appearance, yes, it does need to be cleaned up here and there. Uh, but on the same aspect, God, remember operations comes first. And I'm not saying we need to clean up. I'm not saying we don't need to clean up. We do. Um, on the maintenance program, some of the things I've told the mayor, um, we need to establish a preventive maintenance program. How you do that? We do a storyboard. Driver writes down what it is. Mechanic fixes it, mechanic signs off of it, driver says, signs off on it, establish accountability. Meaning that there's, a, there's no he said, she said. The driver signs off, it's done. Next thing is making sure that we schedule everything. Everything's got to be on a schedule. Um, there's several things we can do to help clean up as far as the transfer station. We need to do some work up there to prevent the trash from being able to blow out. That's where it starts at. It ain't just cleaning up. We've got to do some preventive, preventive measures. Um, 
I'd like to try to put in a drug-free workplace in return if we can find the money. And in return, your workman's comp will go down if we can establish a drug-free workplace. I've also gave some options to the mayor to open up um, Basper and I mean, yeah, Vasper and Oswego may be getting six days a week if the commission wanted it. Some options that we'd have to talk with everybody to, you know, make sure everybody's on board. Um, managing is not a problem. I was a superintendent for FKI Logistics for roughly about 10 years. Um, worked on the road. The reason I gave that job up was that my son was born. I made it till he was four year old. I couldn't take it no more. I had to come off the road. Um, that's one of the reasons I left that job, but um, just do the best I can to serve the people of Campbell County. Um, I know, like I said, I know the ins and outs of everything that runs there, and I believe that I could make y'all proud. I really do. That's about it. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right, and you all received a copy of an application from Dwayne Gibson, but he informed me this afternoon He's withdrawing his name from consideration. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you all again. Uh, I've got one job and several applicants, and I've got to give you a nominee. And so I'll be asking for a motion and second nomination for Mike King. Do I hear a motion? Do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion. Have a motion by Higginbotham. Do I hear a second? I'll second that motion. Second by Lester. All right. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, yes. before we vote, uh, I'd been actually for here for a while and been looking at different problems we've had out there. Are there any way that the commission, and we might do this after we vote on this, but look at a 90-day evaluation on any of the hire? that you and the sanitation committee looks at in 90 days and see if the performance is well? Is that something that you feel comfortable with? I know you're the actual manager of the sanitation being the mayor. I'm Joe, is there any? Um, the present structure that you're operating under, you're the supervisor. You know, if you want to have an advisory uh, committee or, or, or take into account opinions from the commissioner, you can. But uh, like I say, under the present situation, that would be your call whether you wanted to do that or not. Mr. Chairman, I'll offer one thing to you, not the commission. As the man in charge there, if in fact you were to hire somebody as a 90-day probationary period, so to speak, CTAS is a pine that that means you have to give them 90 days. So if, in fact, you didn't like them after the first 30 days or so, your hands would be tied to where you couldn't dismiss them. So I would recommend that you steer away from a firm probationary period. And we've been advised that previously. That's kind of, I mean, that liability worries me there. Uh, but certainly the committee's input is important. Mr. Chairman, this Joe, Joe, is it something that uh, this commission has to act on to, to do that, or is it it's totally up to the mayor? It's up to the mayor under the system that you're operating under now. I'm not comfortable making that commitment at this point, but I, I do appreciate your sentiment and your care and, and have an open ear to you. I know the way that's set up, and we all do, that you make that decision, you throw a name out, and we vote it up or down. But the commission's one's going to have to live with this, the decisions made. At the end of the day, we're the ones that gets the phone calls. Uh, we get the complaints, and we have to live with the budgets that's set before us, whether we increase them or we stay the same, because there's very seldom a decrease. But I know we've looked at it in the past, I believe, in the ammo service. And uh, I don't see no problem with it, but that's your call. It's what I said at first was, are you familiar with it? And are you comfortable with it? Uh, and that's fine. That's, that's fine with me. Okay. Any other discussion? Please vote yes or no. President Parker. Okay.
Does anyone wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. Five yes, seven no. Motion failed. My next nominee is uh, Bill Rufford. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion. Motion by Kitts. Do I hear a second? Second. By Bruce. Any discussion? Hold on one second. I have to get the votes from last time. That's not your vote? No. Okay. We can just change it. It's either yes or no. You meant to vote no. It's a, can we I mean, it's showing it? a vote. Yeah. It, it, we'll just record it as a no since it doesn't change the outcome there. See what I'm saying? It just adds one more to the no sign. The yes is stay five. Yes, it's day five. Here you go. Okay. We're four now. Four. Yeah, four yes, eight no. Okay, so note it in the written record. Yeah, four yes, eight no, three abstain. Motion still fails. Okay. Okay. You ready to reset? Okay. You ready to vote, Mayor? Uh, I nominate Bill Roof. And we had a motion and a second, I think. Motion I need Bruce. Uh, Who made the motion? Scotty. Kids and Bruce. Bruce, second. Okay. Here we go. Any discussion? Are we prepared? Go ahead. Okay. Please vote yes or no. Press confirm. Does anyone wish to change their vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 13 yes. Motion passed. No vote by Douglas. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Uh, that completes the process for tonight. And we'll move through the rest of the agenda for the commission. What's that? Um, his application says he's available, so I'll be contacting Mayor, when you uh, do your ad change form, would you please make sure that he ends up contacting my office for the okay. all of the, yeah. <coughs> Bill, could you please contact finance office in the morning? Yes, sir. Are you available? Yes, sir. Now? Yes, sir. So you can start tomorrow? Well, yes, sir. That's what's needed. Okay. Start tomorrow. Next item on the agenda is approval of previous meeting minutes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second, by Davis. Okay. Well, Any discussion? <laughs> Please vote yes or no. And press confirm. Does anyone wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes. Previous meeting minutes are approved. Notary public application approval. Do I hear a motion? Motion approved, Mr. Chairman. By work, I hear a second. Second, second. second by Stanfield. Well, discussion? Over here. It's okay. I'll get you next time. Any discussion? Please vote yes or no and press confirm. Any wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes. Motion passed. The committee reports and minutes. It's a pleasure, Commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Kitts. Stanfield. Davis. Davis. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Also make sure that we make the correction on the budget resolution. Let's talk to it. That's not, we got there yet. Okay. Okay, that's next time. Said. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Please vote yes or no. Press confirm. Does anyone wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes. Motion passed. 
budget amendments and other funding resolutions, we have an amendment. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Motion approved 12 1 through 12 14 with revised 12 13. Jeff may want to read that in since we. 12 13 has been distributed to you. Did I hear a second? Second. Second by Nance. Please do. This is in the 131 Highway Fund and the 171 Capital Projects Fund. Whereas the highway department has received insurance recovery proceeds for a truck that burned and these funds are being appropriated to provide for a portion of the cost of a replacement truck. And whereas the full replacement cost has become known with bids received and awarded in the amount of $167,291 on December 13, 2018, with $97,679 being provided for with the insurance recovery funds and the remaining cost of $69,612 to be split with 50% 50, 50 being provided from the highway fund and 50% from the general capital projects fund. With this revised amendment being provided for the December 17, 2018 county commission meeting, if you come over to revised exhibit M, you will now see in addition to the 97,679 you saw previously, you will see an additional uh, amount of funds being appropriated, 34806 in the highway fund. That's 50% of that $68,000 figure, $69,000 and change here. And then in the 171 fund, another 34806 being appropriated to match that with it. And that was the intent from the original amendment, as you all know. So what kind of truck we're getting wrong? The last uh, the Okay, any other discussion? Please vote yes or no and press confirm. Does anyone wish to change their vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes, motion passed. Uh, payment of the monthly travel card. I could not come up with my receipt from Opryland Hotel, but you saw me there. So I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you were there. So. I checked in right behind you. Yeah, you were there. When I was there, too. They said three to five days <laughs> yesterday, or, uh, today. So I thought it was a simple matter. So thank you. Motion approved. Second. And please vote yes or no. Thank Press you. confirm. Who second the motion, Mayor? Wick Owens. <laughs> thank you. Skilling. <laughs> skilling. To get a skill for going? Yeah. Charles. Go, can you confirm, Go. please? That's what these, this candy was made out of. All right, does anyone change the vote? Okay, no, Madam Clerk, please show the 15 yes motion pad. Uh, reports from county officials and departments, including the Board of Ed. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Orr. Approve the reports from the county officials and all departments. Thank you, Mr. Second, Chairman. Second by Kitts. Discussion. Please vote yes or no. Press confirm. Will you please silence our phones, please? Joseph. Does anyone wish to change their vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes. Next item is reports from organizations receiving funding from the county, and I believe there was a request for the distribution of funds, and everybody should have a copy of the budget extract distribution to those organizations. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion by work to hear second. Second. Second by Bruce. Discussion? Please vote yes or no and press confirm. Does anyone wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes, motion passed. Other matters? Um, don't have anything on that agenda, but we do have a scheduling part there. Uh, Amanda brought to our attention. We've got the regular meeting or the workshop? <laughs> the commission meeting. The, the regular commission meeting <laughs> next month falls on the holiday. So, um, usually the following Tuesday. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shift that to following Tuesday. That's okay. So, we'll please make notice, media, uh, and we'll send them written notice too. So, uh, what date is that, Mr. Chairman? January 22nd. We'll move from the 21st to January 22nd, <coughs> 6 o'clock, same schedule. Thank you. What you going to mention about the airport Higgy was talking about earlier. 
Um, yes, we did. We had scheduled uh, naming of Campbell County Airport Tom Steiner Field on the 21st. We can't do official business, but we can do honorary business that day because everybody's got a day off. It could be a really good day to go out there and get community participation if you all are available. So, I'll. I'd, I'd be glad to hear your input on it. What day? Monday. Monday. It's and it's the Martin holiday. Luther King, Martin so some Luther of them may have day. travel plans, but I don't know. As far as me, I think it'd be great. I don't see no. Your motion? Because <laughs> if we discuss it, I got I guess I got to do it. Well, have a motion to discuss. All right, and second to discuss. Vote on it in discussion. Okay. Oh, Rusty. Do you want me to vote, or you want no, to talk? About? I mean, oh, my thoughts I is I think off in the middle there, but. well, everybody sees where I'm headed with it. I think it's a, a good time. Uh, I don't think it would uh, actually be bad to have it on that day. Uh, I think it's, it's a, Tommy's birthday. I think the 21st is Tommy's birthday. Okay. And uh, I think okay, it'd be. We'll stay with the date we've established then. I think it'd be honorable. With somebody out to know the fact his brother before we can be there. Certainly will. I think it was seven five o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. That evening? Yeah. Yeah. That was the initial date. I think we would get on the first one. Probably Well the good news is we have a workshop the week before. Um but we'll we'll nail it down before that. We'll go over tomorrow and find out. So I mean does the commission have any the week before, I mean. I don't see anything that would hinder us doing that. I mean, we're not taking, we're just dedicating that day for that uh, name of the airport. I think it'd be a, a great time. The more people you have at them, the seem like the better you have. Okay, then we'll stay with it as scheduled then. Okay. Well, we'll look at this one and we'll show up. We'll confirm it before then. If you can contact Jennifer tomorrow, we'll talk to her. Make sure, because we got got a couple moving parts. We got some citizens that are participating, and uh, we'll make sure we get a good crowd there. Okay. Mr. Chairman, they don't tempt them. Mr. Chairman, they withdraw their motions on that or for us to vote on it or what? Well, we didn't change anything, so. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, the other portions I had for your information there, uh, Comcast notice you got in your folders and then the, uh, then the mining permits, just for your information. Mr. Chair, Chairman, before you leave your uh, go ahead. Uh, before you leave your section, Mr. Chairman, will you, uh, in your section, entertain a motion to suspend the rules to take care of that lease for the sheriff's department on uh, Massengill Mountain? For the I think that mountain? was already brought up, Jeff, last meeting. I don't think we'd have to suspend the rules for it. In my understanding, we discussed Might it. I have it in their portion. You put it on your portion. I thought. Okay. Andy had actually brought it up toward the end of the meeting and brought it to our attention. It was, okay. it was handed out in our packets. Okay. So we did. I mean, to me, I don't see no reason to suspend the rules if we discussed it. Okay. Oh, I was saying I didn't see it on the agenda. Okay. Second. I have a motion to suspend the rules to entertain the Massey Hill Mountain Police. Any discussion? Please vote yes or no on suspending the rules. I do think we discussed it, but I was, I was missing the left hand here. So Amanda last time. Out, so. yeah. It was not on the, I received it. Actually, I forgot yeah, about it, and Andy brought it Andy, up. Andy, Andy didn't bring it up. Go, can you confirm, please? Just Anyone wish to change their vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Rules are suspended for consideration. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the lease agreement for the antenna tower. Second, Mr. Chairman. I work second by kits. Discussion. <laughs> Please vote yes or no. Press confirm. Joe looked at this, I'm sure, and approved it. I did. Does anyone wish to change their vote? <laughs> Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes, motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, before we move on, you were talking about Comcast. Uh, the cable committee, we, I think we call it communication committee now. Mm -hmm. Can the chairman call a meeting? 
and I think, are you still the chairman, Sue? Uh, we need to discuss and see if we can get a hold of Comcast. We need to bring them back in. What's it, communication? Sue's the chair, so, and Zach's boss. Yeah. Okay. If you can call a meeting sometime while we're kind of got downtime in January, maybe we can get Mr. Bird in here and hopefully AT&T. Uh, they need to show up when we ask they them did. to come. They did. Uh, they and I don't know if Gens has had any phone calls. I've had a few phone calls about the change of these the Comcast channels. And this is, I think this is what this is concerning. Uh, a lot of our citizens have been paying for Comcast for a while and had these had these channels. And I know sometimes they tweak them, but I think a lady called me the other night and I checked these like 28 channels that had been took off. Uh, and that's not cool. And, going up. <laughs> uh, and I know we can't control that because it goes to the state now, and they do their their agreements, their lease agreements, or or their franchise agreements. But Mr. Bird needs to be here if we have to build a fire in our state senator. You think he's still there? I would say, unfortunately, he probably is. Uh, there's networking coffee Thursday morning with your state senator. Can't remember where it is. It's the Chamber Networking Coffee. If you want to come talk to him? I'll, I'll make Thursday. it. Uh, it's in town. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I want to kind of reiterate what Mr. Orrick is, is saying there. I, I've had phone calls too, you know, with them providing service. You know, they're supposed to be providing service, and we've got customers that's less than a mile off the four lane that can't get Comcast. Yeah. Mr. Davis? Okay. Yeah, I also been getting several phone calls on that, and I do know um, what happens here is uh, after you do a promo with them and time elapses, what happens is your bill automatically goes up, and then your channels go down. In most of the cases, I think it's a good idea to get them in here, but uh, you have to call and re-ask for a promo or tell them, hey, I'm going to find somebody else. And uh, I know that firsthand, so I just thought I'd share that information. Okay. Brown? Uh, we haven't heard nothing in the last six months on the current also change order. You don't know where we at that or where we were six months ago. Um, there's not been a decision made. There's not been a decision made and it's not set for here. Mr. Dunaway is not pressing. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Stanfield? Every year, usually, about the same time, you always provide us with a uh, <coughs> box of meals showing all the ongoing litigation, all the lawsuits out of the county. Can you get us one of the lawsuits? Yes. We, we do that on, on an annual basis through December 31. Can you get us also the one prior that's already been settled and outcome and everything? During the year? Yeah. For the last two years? Well, there. Like a silent lawsuit? Uh, there are several of them. We could, uh, we would know. Uh, what cases are no longer on the docket, which would indicate that they've been either settled or dismissed. Uh, and I, we could make you a list of those. I do not have a permit for that, but I could, I could make you a list of them. Just like this, the silent policy. Is it still going on or has it been settled? I'm, I'm thinking that there's still a part of it that's going on, so I was thinking we might be able to come back. And, can you get us the ones that still active and the ones that's been settled and outcome? Mr. Settled? Chairman. So I don't have the outcomes myself, but I, I would be able to give you the ones that are no longer pending and, and whether or not uh, the court file shows that they were dismissed by the judge or if they were dismissed by the parties. If they're dismissed by the parties, that normally means they're settled. Well, just like when I was talking about the silence. Is there any way to see what it's cost the county or what the county has paid now? Is there any way, I guess, to, to determine the outcome of what the dollar amount was that it cost? 
that would be a, a question that we would have to ask uh, the insurance company. The insurance company or, or finance if we've made anything out of it. It's not something that comes to me. Yep. <laughs> One thing I know, Scott, is what we paid the attorney <coughs> that represents us. Uh, Mayor Morton approved the payment to him just, uh, I don't know, three or four weeks ago for about 15 more grand, something like that. So we paid another $15,000 since last February. Yes, we did. Uh, the best thing that could have happened to the county if they hadn't appealed it was for us to pay our $25,000 and been done. But that wasn't an option for us because they appealed it yet again, and it just drags on and on and on and on. Um, is there a way that, I guess, is there a way to find out that out? Well, we can do that. Yeah, we can do Mr. Ord, once they're settled, Joe, and they're settled with an agreement between the parties, that's sometimes it's sealed. We don't have that information. But if it actually goes through the court system, is it actually brought to light the settlements? Any, any decision that's made by a judge is public record. It's part of the Open Records Act. We had a case that was just so even if they decide to, s to settle, it should be knowledgeable to all citizens on the settlements, or is only when it goes to court and the judge is involved and he he, he gives a ruling or, or however it ends up is a ruling? Any decision that's made by a judge okay. is an open record. Okay. On, on settlements that are made, some are done open records and some are not. Some are open records even if they say they're not. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there are exceptions to that. But any, any decision made by a judge that's, that is documented by court order is a public record. And the other ones? Uh, the ones that settled between the parties, that's going to be left up for insurance company or, or uh, attorney that's representing the county to give us that information. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, while we're on this subject, yes. Joe, uh, we're keeping you hopping tonight here. Um, I've got a lot of constituents that have been asking me, you know, uh, we've got a lot of lawsuits pending, you know, the public's uh, concerned about it. Are they maybe uh, uh, maybe one or two or some that's, that we need to be aware of that's, that's, uh, that's going to hit us coming up? I, I, you know, it'd be good if you can tell us. All right, can we just get a copy when you get the... You, you'll get the year-end yeah. roll-up. Uh, so as far as predicting what happened, what's going to happen in them, I, I, I can't do that, really. It would just... It would not be... It wouldn't be of any value to... Me. No, the question was, Do we? are there any uh, lawsuits that we need to be uh, concerned about that's going to hit the county financially? That That's what my question was. I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of any that what, what would be what I would consider a material impact on uh, the financial bottom line of the county. Uh, thanks a lot. That's, that's what I need to know. Okay. Okay. Uh, move to the commissioner's portion. Okay, Commissioner Stanfu. Um, all of you that was here last workshop were brought up having a marquee outside the courthouse. And Ralph had got us some dollar amounts and I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with the marquee as long as it, I think, the bid is 15000 now. It hasn't long, been bid. I mean, the, the cost, as long as it don't exceed $15,000, we will be okay. We don't need a budget amendment. The funds are already appropriated in the, per in the parking lot project. But what we'll need, Scott, in order to move forward, we'll need a motion 
to uh, approve bid, the right. project to be solicited for bid, and Ralph's committee is supposed to get some specifications together and vote on those. And I would, if I was as part of the motion, if I were you, I would defer that the specifications be made by the Building and Grounds Committee. That's what all your motion should be. Uh, approve it for bid. And, uh, Hold on just a second. Now, I'd like to make a motion that we refer to the Marquee outside the courthouse and the Grounds Committee to establish specifications. Set the specs on it. And approve the project to go forward with the right. Okay. Okay. And first and second discussion? I do. Uh, and this is going to be at the corner of Paris Nance and Jacksboro. Uh, we going to ask you to go there and mark Okay. I just want to make certain I want it myself. I can vote for it if it's away from the courthouse, if it's down there. It's going to be on the courthouse lot. It's going to be on the parking lot. It's going to be on West End, that Paris Nance corner in right Jacksboro. Mm -hmm. Well, you're putting a whole lot of confidence in me. <laughs> the Yins are, I know what you're doing. You are fixing me up with Jacksboro. <laughs> <laughs> Motion is second. Any other discussion? Uh, so moved, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I got, I got one more thing. So only thing left to do down there is the ledger, correct? It's there. It's there. It's there. So everything's good. Okay. Get together, build it into ground. Actually, I just spoke with. <laughs> I spoke with Ron last week, and he said he'd dig us a ditch to get the power over to us. So. Yeah, we'll yeah. I'll have a meeting and push that up and we'll go there and get that work done. Please vote yes or no, press confirm. Does anyone wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please share the vote. 15 yes, motion yeah. passed. Mr. Ord. I hope it's already Yes. You said reverse order. <laughs> Um, we had some people here last week about the Black Lung, uh, the Trust Act that they're taking to Washington, and they brought us a resolution. Joe, you had a chance to look at it? Yeah, it's in proper form. That sounded good. I want to make a motion that we approve that resolution to send to the federal government, state government, whoever needs the copy of it, that we can hopefully reverse this, uh, hopefully, and we need to get behind it, not just with our vote, but we need to get behind it with our backs and start pushing. These people don't need to lose their what is due to them. This is actually, they've worked for this. That's my motion. I have a motion by order, second by going. Uh, any discussion? Please vote yes or no. Press confirm. Yeah, I'm trying to find another stuff. <coughs> Do you wish to change your vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes. Motion passed. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I also want to uh, commend uh, Commissioner uh, Tyler King for all the work uh, that he put into it, going to Washington and uh, talking to officials, and uh, I think that uh, we need to commend him and appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have another uh, resolution on the Tennessee Open Meetings Act Sunshine Law. We had actually met, the committee uh, had met a couple weeks ago, the Ethics Committee, uh, that's set up by the commissioners. And you should have a copy of what we decided to do. Uh, the FMS committee met last week and we approved it as its entirety with with the recommendation from Zach Marlowe to wait on uh, our website once it's fixed. But I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. We'll just leave it like it is. If you'll see the second page, it goes into detail and tells that it, it will be sent out to La Follette Press, the Volunteer Times, WLF Radio, WJJT, WQLA, WYSH. Uh, and actually, and I'm looking for it, and Joe, you tell me if I'm right or wrong, we wanted to actually do it at our two or three sites uh, here in the courthouse on the bulletin board. 
in Aline's office, the annex at La Follette, and the one at Jellicoe. If that's fine with you, Aline, we're going to be sending copies. If somebody can post them at your buildings for our public meetings, uh, do you have any problem with this? My motion is to approve this resolution that we, we stand behind it. What's wrong, Scott? What are the ones that you wanted to add to it? We got the, the bulletin boards is the actually ones that we wanted to put on there too. I mean, there's a lot of here to do, and hold on just a second. I got a motion there. Second. Second. Second by go. There's there's a lot to do with this, but we can follow suit with this. And the word adequate, that's what I told the FMS committee, will be. We've already been adequate. We're just making sure we we rubber stamp this again. This pretty much is a rubber stamp. Hopefully, when Scott's sign gets up, that'll help us a lot. Too. Okay. Any other discussion? Please vote yes or no and press confirm. Does anyone wish to change their vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 15 yes, motion passed. Commissioner Nance. Um, let's see. Communication meeting, maybe we could have it January the 14th before the workshop. It starts at 5.30. Is that correct, the workshop? I'm sorry. What? Which what one? Question? Can you restate that, sir? January the 14th. Communication At um, 5 in the afternoon. Can you Communications be here committee. Do what, January 14th Can 5. you be here by 5? I'll make sure I'm here. I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to get a hold of Russell Burden. And the guy from AT&T, he's, he's willing to come out, but we usually don't get nothing out of them. They just tell us it's, uh, they can't disclose to us where they're going to add on. But at least we can tell them that, hey, we want more added on. But our biggest problem is that I'm hearing is these people that is losing services that was that was when they signed in for this contract with Comcast they're losing channels and it, and before long they're not going to have the channels to me it's I'm almost to the point to be honest with you to cut mine completely out my boys are gone it's just me and my wife we don't watch enough TV to, to turn it upside down but we still got to have our internet service but what's coming next? Are they going to slow the internet speeds down? Or we, we, we need to keep a good communication track, but our problem is, and you, you're familiar with it, is, is Mr. Bird having him here, here at these meetings to tell us what he can and can't do. He just won't show up. But yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. The networking coffee Thursday, if you want to talk to state senator, is the red barn behind the diner, right down the four lane here. Behind Ayers Auction Realty. Oh, okay. So 8 o'clock, everybody's welcome. Okay. Commissioner Marlowe. I'm good. Okay. Commissioner Lester. Um, I was just checking to see, I think you were going to, to the uh, TDOT meeting last Thursday. I had brought up an yes. issue about General Carl W. Steiner Highway. We the had study a study is going on at Glade Springs. Okay. Um, if it's not underway, it's, it's still. We had a, a, a pretty bad wreck last week up right. there as and well. So far, uh, Keisha asked specifically about the widening in the valley. It's set for the spring and, and has not been decremented at all based on the interstate project. So they are going to widen it. Are they going to put just a turn lane all the way up? Or are they going to do four lanes three plus? Lanes. Three lanes. So this is the first project from Big O's to the county line. So. Okay. Okay, and that starts in the spring? Starts in the spring. Okay. Sure does. All right, thank you. That's it. And um, I'll, y'all remember Keisha. Um, she had a family member had a bad fall today, so um, we were we were double short staff today, but remember them in your prayer. Okay. Commissioner Kitts. Okay. I've got four things. I'll make it pretty quick here. Um, That's two things. Guys, it's uh, it's time for us to try to do something for these children here. If uh, if you're a parent or grandparent, um, I've been working for about maybe maybe five or six weeks now, and. Uh, and most of you may not know, and you may know, I'm working on a dinosaur uh, playground. 
and it did help me when I took the county trips to uh, to do my business and uh, I've talked to Melissa Nolan she's a designer historical reservist out of uh, Memphis the company is called A2H engineer architect and planners now I guess I hope a lot of them are going to be happy to know I, I'm able to get a 50-50 grant for that out there and uh, we'll be talking about this uh, a lot more in the future. Uh, I've really got my heart set to it. I've talked to several constituents and, and voters, not not only in my district, just actually I'm about all over the county a lot anyway. And and uh, I just want you all to know that uh, I think we need to move forward. I've uh, got some kind of figure from them that's very reasonable that will not at all break the county with a match. A match. Uh, we'll be talking about the, the figures of the first of the year. I want to get the exact amount. It's not going to, at all. It's a good match. It's 50-50. I'm really going to say to you guys, it's time to do something. It's, it's, it's not going to break the county. It's going to be very feasible. I've discussed it with Jeff and Mr. Marlowe. And I hope you guys will jump on board with me on this. And of us 15 commissioners that's on board here, it will probably be the you know best move we can make recreation-wise for, for the children. And not only that, guys. It, it ain't a motion. I'm talking, this is part of my, no, it, I ain't got no motion. It's part of my, what I have on the agenda, Mr. Davis. So that being said, uh, I just uh, hope you all will jump on board with me here and, and, and move this forward and, uh, and, and be taken in consideration because I'm going to be really pushing it pretty hard the first of the year. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and you talked about the red lights, uh, Lisa did, so that's, and uh, you, I know it, it, we keep talking about the Oak Grove. You did talk to a constituent uh, from the school board. Actually, we had a visit. Can you give us an update on that, please, Mr. John, you got the best information. Kids, uh, Mr. Lassley and I went down and looked at the property and everything. I think he's going to be presenting it to the school board and the to turn that property over to us. Also, they have the Ridgewood Fire Department down there in that area. So That's something we hadn't discussed, but that would be an excellent, there's a parcel built, just built for that, so. But, uh, Mr. Kids, I would say the first of the year that uh, Mr. Lassley and the board will have something in right. To be present to the commission? Yes. All right, that sounds great. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I appreciate it. And let's say Merry Christmas to all of you. It's been great working with you. Looking forward to working with you uh, the upcoming year. Mr. Higginbottom. Yes, the only thing I had was the uh, homeless shelter in Scott County. <coughs> uh, Andy's not here, so I don't know if he's got the data yet. We'll push up the next month. Well, we were going to ask the nonprofits to come and present. Uh, I don't know if that's budget cycle or if you're looking to do it before the weather gets cold or. That's one of the actually. Uh, well, we'll, in maybe last year. As soon as we can get staff back together, we'll press forward. Mr. Chairman, I, I had one, like everybody else, I had one more thing to say about the park, if it's okay. Um, I also want to make a note here too that not only is this part, it's not going to be just a small thing, you know, for millions of dollars and it's also going to generate revenue here because what we're doing here is something that probably one, I think maybe one or two counties in the whole state of Tennessee has. So what it's going to do is it's going to generate revenue and people really are going to come from a lot of places, even if I have to put my own billboard up when it's here, call, talk with the Chamber of Commerce, it's going to be promoted, but I know it's going to generate a lot of, a lot of uh, revenue to the county. It's going to be something that's very attractive and nice and I just wanted to add that and I appreciate it. Okay. Robert. That's all I have. Okay. With, with the yeah. Highway 63 plan? Uh, on the, uh, the gate, the gate up there, the same place is. I haven't and been able fence, to. That fence, you take a look at it. It's, right. it's uh, 
it's our next priority for fence. So, but I got a director hired tonight, so we'll, we'll get on it. So. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Uh, on the nonprofit, when would you, is your idea of when you want to the date next month? Actually, actually, I think that we need to start it as soon as possible. I think we need to get through the actual commission meeting and have it toward the end of next month so we have time to come in. And No, after the committee, I think we need to have a special meeting to let them come in and discuss. What I think, well, there's quite a few. I was looking at my list and I... <coughs> you want to call a meeting and try to set a target date and get people to Well, come? Johnny is the chairman of the budget and finance. He'll have to call the meeting. I can't call the meeting. Half of them after work shop, half of them the next Monday. Is that work? Hey. My question on that, this is something we're looking at the next day. Grant, do it before the budget. I'm going to build what's going for. I'm going to stand Mr. Chairman. Zach. Scott, hold on. Go ahead. Um, if we go cut someone. Well, here's what I would recommend that you do. We send out um, the budget request information to all the organizations and we um, all the organizations that generally get the funding know what the cycle is. If you would like for us to, then we can send out a letter to all the ones that have are presently receiving funding. I'm quite certain you guys don't want to entertain adding to your pie. No. no? Okay. So uh, that being said, uh, what I would do is I would send out a letter to them, ask them what their request is going to be for 1920. Um, get that letter out to them, have them submit their request back into our possession, let us compile the information, and then uh, let that be one of the first items you entertain in your budget hearings, and then go about that in an orderly process to say, okay, I'm going to disseminate what you've got in the request, then y'all can set up, Johnny can, who he wants to come at whatever meeting, take as much time as you want to discuss their program and their request. Um, that'd be my recommendation. That way you're not getting inundated with a bunch of information that doesn't necessarily have to do with a funding request or whatever else. And you can then choose, if I'm only going to ask you for $500, do you really want me to come down here and spend up 40 minutes of your time? If I want to ask you $40,000, then you may want to uh, uh, grill me for uh, a couple of hours. That, that'd be how I would go about doing it as opposed to just some... Mr. Marlow. What I was going to say is, when are these organizations supposed to have their own report? They send in, uh, at least from our standpoint, they have to submit certain documentation with each budgetary request site. Um, as it relates to a annual report, I don't know when they're supposed to file their annual report, but we have a budgetary, the commission voted on years ago and the budget finance committee did, established a criteria sheet, we call it, that says, okay, you have to provide us this, 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 and this when you submit your budget request. And that has to be accompanying your budget request. So in that regard, if that's what you mean by annual report, it becomes accompanying the budget request. And when should that? We will send out the request information and in begin. Yeah, we do it every. We begin the budget process in the month of January, and what we will do in order to expedite the um, volunteer organizations, we'll go ahead and send out a specific letter to everybody that got funding last year, telling them that what the intent is, we want to get them to submit that information by such and such date. We do that every year. I can't tell you off the top of my head what that date is. We haven't set the formal budget for the schedule presently, but it'll begin in January. What I was going to say, what I think the best course of action would be is to wait till those come in and then set a meeting. Oh, absolutely. That's what I was trying to say. If that wasn't clear, then I'm sorry. Commissioner Agabon. 
question when the um, when was the letters going to be sent out that way it give them ample amount of time to come in and uh, discuss with them. Yeah we do it every January. Every January 1st February is when we start. We'll, we'll lay out the schedule. Uh, we'll send out letters to every one of the commissioners and every one of the school board members for what they want to request in the form of capital projects and blah blah blah. And at the same time we send out for volunteer fire departments and all of the uh, volunteer organizations requesting funds. Commissioner Orton. The information you had last year, Jeff, from these organizations, I know they have to submit their financial disclosure. Have you got them on file that you could actually email us maybe part of them out? And from last year's request? From last year's request to see what their financial statements are saying. Sure. Uh, I think that would make more sense to me if I'm looking at their financial statement. I'll, and I'm not against none of these. I want you to understand that. And I'm sure Mr. Davis that isn't either. But we need to be disturbed the county and look at these. I don't think we've ever done this I, that I, since I've been here and look at them because a lot of them was kickstart money. They kickstarted their organization. They may be down the road, but I don't want to wait for the last minute and say, you're not going to get this. I mean, I know we're going to do it during a budget cycle, yeah. but they need to be familiarized that, and I know the politics will come into play. I, what, uh, <laughs> what I would have I'm a little uh, confused about what we're doing at, 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 at this particular meeting, but ordinarily what would happen would be at your budget and finance committee meeting that you had last Monday night, if this is an endeavor that you wish to undertake, just set it as part of your scheduling of your budget and finance committee activity say, okay, here's what we'd like to have. And, and you'd have it for us. Right, and, okay, right, that'd be right, great. Right, right. That, and that way we can cover it. Yeah. Uh, no, next month's fine. And, uh, I'll, uh, Their financial disclosure is not going to change a whole lot from year to year, it, I would it think. Will not. Uh, I'll get uh, uh, tomorrow, I'll get uh, Richard to uh, compile the ones that we got from last year, make you a list, get you the information, get that all out to you guys in the form of an email. Have to be broken up in probably some smaller chunks because you can't get, you know, such a big file that you can't receive it, stuff like that. But yeah, I'll get it out to you. And what I was trying to say is the same thing Zach was saying. You do not want to start having meetings with these folks until after you get their request. I mean, you just got your cart in front of the horse if you do that. Oh yeah, you, 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 we'll, we'll be setting. Yeah, you, we set the budgetary process calendar every year. So yeah, you'll all be fully aware. I know for the new guys it's a little different, but you'll see how it works. It, it'll, it'll start becoming more clear as you get into February first, March. Quickly, please. Okay, Jeff. Um, I guess when you listen, you learn a lot. Rust answers a couple of the questions, but one question I have for you: Do you, uh, most of the organizations nonprofit is most of them pretty active are they using the funds or do you I, all I get I don't know if I can answer your question all I can tell you is they make a request they have to submit certain criteria information some of its financial nature some of it is do you have good standing with the IRS are you in good standing with the state of Tennessee blah 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 I couldn't tell As of you last what, year's budget, they were all doing fine yeah, work with yeah, it. Yeah, you know, uh, okay. that's more of a political thing to evaluate what they do. I, I don't Mayor, know. He answered my question. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Banks. Okay. All right. Yeah. One more. I'm going to make a motion that everybody vote yes if you're in support of the sales tax. It's not voting. Hold on just a second. Want, Sorry. I need to catch this. See who's in favor of it when and see if we want to go forward with it. The motion is to everyone to vote. If you're going to support it, vote yes. If you're not, vote no. On the raising the sales tax from 9.25 to 9.75. This is not to put it on a ballot. This is to see if the commission is in favor of going farther in the future with getting out into the public and sending I'll entertain a second so I can talk to the attorney. Do I hear a second? I'll second. A second by Barry Joe. <coughs> We're going to violate anything in the, in the law about proceeding forward on a taxation. You got to pay another bet, don't you, Joe? 
Can we do this tonight without interrupting the process? He's trying to do a straw vote. This, this wouldn't be anything other than a straw vote. Okay. Could, you could do a hand. All right. Mr. Chairman, I've got a question to ask. Mr. Davis? Quickly, please. Yeah, uh, Mr. Davis. My question to you, I know this is a straw vote, but you had talked about doing this before, and you wanted to try to put it on the ballot for a, an, an early thing where it's going to cost the county maybe twenty, thirty-five thousand dollars right. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Commissioner Marlowe? Um, all I'm going to say is, and more than that, when how I vote, but if we go forward with this, I think it probably needs to go through ways and means, and I think that a plan needs to be made as to how this money is going to be spent in a timeline. Because if we don't, when it gets time to build a high school, then the money won't be there, and then we'll already be maxed on the sales tax, and then you will have to raise the property you will pay. Mr. Lester? That's what I was hearing say. I said maybe we ought to, because I think we have appropriated, re entertain the ideal in, in foreseeing the future of these schools need to be updated and rebuilt and that type of stuff. I, I just think that if we just put it out there, the public won't even understand. You know what I'm saying? Well, we're going to have to go before the school. That's Everybody what I'm saying. They should probably lay out what they need. We don't need to raise this for the school system. We need to raise this. This has got to go to the county. Capital outlay. Capital outlay, so that they hear mark. And we can help the county in every way that it sees fit. But the money would be there when the school, the school seems to be renovated or, or not. But we, we don't want to hear mark. But, I, what I want you to do is tell me, I, mean, I ain't going to be, I ain't going to go out here, I've done talk to several people, and I ain't had, had one yet tell me they wouldn't support it. I mean, I'm but just saying I would rather tax. raise a sales tax than but property tax. If you're against it, and school board is against it, then it won't pass. I, I'm like Lisa. I think that you have to have some kind of common goal before people will support this endeavor. And we, we all know that it's coming down the pike that we're going to have to do some renovations, some new buildings for the school. <laughs> that would make people in my district support it more. That's what I was saying. But saying. you couldn't earmark it and say this all goes to schools. The county commission needs to leave it in their hands to where they can help in those endeavors for these buildings for the schools. Because once you stick it in the school's hands, you start increasing their maintenance <laughs> effort, it, it's continuality. I didn't, say, I didn't want to air march. I'm just saying, I think the public needs to. They need to know what it's going to go for raised. instead of just. Right. Right. And if they and should see the condition of the schools and what, what really needs to be done in the schools to run them properly, then I think that they would be more apt. Well, in the past two times that we tried, that the commission had sent it, it didn't go much nowhere, did it, Jeff? It just it got started, and they was even commissioners that was against it that got out and campaigned against it. And that's not good, but then you turn it right around and you have to do a property tax increase. And that... And, it, and, it's, and that's why we don't have the we don't have the authority to increase the sales tax. We have the authority to do the property tax. So, if people could understand that this is actually ever hits everybody, it's just not hitting the ta the property owners of this county. It's just hitting the, the ones that's coming here and buying. People travels through our county and buying. If it was to me, if it was higher than Knox counties or Anderson counties, I'd be against it. And that's what I. But it's in the same category and the state lets us at one time and I'll be real brief one time the state talked about doing it their self right. increasing and taking that money their self and that would be an embarrassment to us if we like Anderson County's already getting it and the state decide well the counties that's raised it great but we're going to take and raise it and everyone we're going to take that part of it and I'll be quiet hey, yeah, what I was going to bring up if you hold a uh, special election for this, it will not pass. It will have to go to a, straight to a general election, which will be 2020, the presidential election, uh, as well as the um, school board. Mr. Chairman, I completely and totally disagree with you, Robert. Yeah. You don't. So you. So you think of the pass on a special election? I think the only chance you have of getting it passed is on a special election. I. I don't know. It's I failed, think somebody brought it's up the notion three that times. nobody's had a special election that passed it. 
No, uh, if you remember the advice we got from uh, Mayor Waters, I think his name is Waters in Sevier County. Sevier County. Well, that was the only way they ever got their tags. Have it on Christmas Day. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the coldest time in the world or the hottest day in the world, that's when you're going to get it back. Yeah. I, I, I do agree that the public's, before we go too far in this discussion, the public's going to know the county chair. If we have the schools in the discussion, right. we are a layer of relationship away from it. But I know where you're going with it. The, the last time right. we had a passage of one mayor was when we did the uh, funding for uh, Campbell County Conference High School. Mm -hmm. It will take the uh, school system to be fully in favor of it. It will take the teachers to be spreading the propaganda to the children within their classrooms to carry home with their parents. It will take the united support of the commission and the school board to have the community rise up and support it. As it relates to earmarking money, uh, it shouldn't be earmarked, but that being said, state law earmarks a great portion. Half of every uh, sales tax, local office sales tax dollar that we receive by law is dedicated to go to education funding. Education funding then by the school board action can dedicate that to go to debt service, but the county commission cannot override the state requirement to split that to where half of every dollar that's collected goes to the school system funding. So would, notwithstanding, however you want to gallop. I would encourage everybody to use the term designate, not earmark. Absolutely. Earmark is discretionary spending. You're choosing to do something within the budget that wasn't um, wasn't a line item, but you can be legally done. But uh, designating the funds required either helps. Well, my intent for the vote was before I stick my neck out and try to get it passed, I'm going to support it 100%. And I ain't going to be afraid of it. But if the, if the majority of the commissioners ain't going to support it, then there's no sense in doing it. I think, too, maybe that would help your case would be we go to Knoxville, we go to Anderson County, we pay 9.75. Right. Our tax rate is 9.25 here. By raising it up that, that would put about a million dollars into the fund that we're needing. Mm -hmm. Nobody notices the difference if you go to Anderson County or if you pay here. I'll just do simple math. I'll just round it up to 10%. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, 48 I, cents on well, $5 versus 46 cents on $5. Right. So, Mr. Bear, sorry. That's okay. That's this, my fault. This tax doesn't, doesn't raise on food. Uh, there's the state of Tennessee exempted a whole lot of things from sales tax. Last cycle, two cycles ago. Yeah, there's some changes, but there's wherever local option food. sales tax would be applicable, it would go, like Lisa just said, from nine and a quarter total to 9.75 in total. And as she also just mentioned to you, the difference, or I did to her, on a $5 purchase, you're talking about the difference between a 48 cent tax amount and 46 cent tax amount. Yeah. Most people will leave some pennies there. Well, let's vote. Clarification of the motion, please. Let's uh, call for the order. I did just want to say my con only concern with it is, yeah, it's going to generate us a million dollars a year or over, but that's also a million dollars less in the local economy. Um, secondly, and my vote for it, that does not mean that I'm for it. That means that I'm willing to hear both sides and have discussions with lots of community input about it. Good deal. Clarification, Ralph. It's just actually to it's straw to support, vote to see what kind of support vote. the commissioners is willing to give this to move forward. It's not, not, not legally not, binding. Right. Just a straw vote to to see if it's something that we want to proceed. Mr. Chairman, just again for the record, this is nothing to vote yay or no. Just straw. We're just to, just to talk about it. Legally see. binding. All right. Just to vote. Call okay. for question. Please Thank you. Yes or no. Press confirm. Does anyone wish to change the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please show the vote. 14 yes. 
One no. Mr. Stanfield. Okay. Motion passed. That's all I have, and Merry Christmas, everybody. Bruce. I can move to each little read on this. Listen, I, that's what my last name's list draw here. I don't think people forget. We're getting a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Hey, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, guys. Wayne Baird. All right. Mr. Baird. Two real quick things. Um, one, I mentioned it a few times. Uh, inspections, the state inspection, you know, I still want to bring it back to the local level. And uh, second thing, building um, inspections. Building, building inspections, yes. Inspection. Building inspections. Um, and then the next thing is, I want us all as a, as a commission to uh, get behind Mr. Rutherford, supporting, uh, give him time to see what he can do. Uh, let's not throw rocks right off the bat. I think he's uh, he's got the credentials to, to do a good job. And so I'd like for the commission to uh, give him time and, and see which direction it goes. And I um, just want to wish everybody Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Bruce, Corey. Hey. Before we got to train. Meeting less than an hour. Oh, it's up there. Oh, thank you. Great. It's a miracle. It's my Christmas miracle. And, uh, I went into get some chips. And there she had her Aline Bear chip.